All right, well, welcome everyone. My name is Sarah Burris. I'm the scientific liaison here at Fujifilm Visual Sonics. And today we have another exciting live webinar titled Photoacoustic Image Guided Oxygen Enhanced Photodynamic Therapy of Hypoxic Tumors. Our webinar today will be presented by Marvin Xavier Salvin from Tufts University. Just as a reminder, we are recording the webinar today and a recording will be made available for those who registered. All of the lines are muted for the duration of the webinar. So if you have a question, please submit that through the Q&A button located at the bottom of your screen. All of the questions will be answered at the end of the session and you can expect our webinar to last approximately 30 minutes today with another five to 10 minutes for questions and answers. Our presenter today, Marvin is a third year PhD student in the Integrated Biofunctional Imaging and Therapeutics Lab at Tufts University. He's currently completing his PhD in the Department of Biomedical Engineering under Dr. Valley Malidi. His current research focuses on using oxygenated nano droplets to enhance photodynamic therapy efficacy in hypoxic tumors. His research interests are photoacoustic imaging, nanotechnology, and image guided photodynamic therapy in head and neck cancers and pancreatic cancer. His research goal is to improve the efficacy of cancer treatments using photodynamic therapy-based combination therapies. And with that, I give you Marvin. Thanks, Sarah, for the introduction. Yeah, so today I'll be presenting uh, my research actually on photoacoustic image guided oxygen and photodynamic therapy of hypoxic tumors. Adenic cancer, which is the sixth most common cancer worldwide in occurrence, uh, the defining feature of an adenic cancer is the heterogeneity. This heterogeneity makes it difficult to identify a specific target and treat them in a timely manner. And the other feature of the adenic cancer is hypoxia. Uh, the hypoxia means like the tumor oxygenation demands outweighs the available supply from the blood vessels in the tumor environment. The result of hypoxia is the reduced response uh, to radiation and chemotherapy. Uh, as a result of this reduced response, oftentimes in clinics, doctors use aggressive treatment options uh, in combination of radiation and chemotherapy to treat the adenic cancers in the patients, which severely affects the quality of life. And uh, recent research in the field found that like by increasing the tumor oxygenation, the chemo resistance of the tumors can be significantly reduced. Uh, this finding led to more focused research on developing less aggressive treatment options. Uh, in my research, I'll be presenting one of the less aggressive treatment modality that's been explored for the treatment of like hypoxic head and neck cancers. The modality that I'll be talking about is like called photodynamic therapy. Uh, PDT or photodynamic therapy is a, a photochemistry based therapeutic modality utilizing light and a photosensitizing molecule. These photosensitizers are non toxic at normal conditions, but gets activated by a light of specific wavelength. And upon excitation, they interact with the nearby molecular ox uh, oxygen and other biomolecules to produce singlet oxygen and reactive molecular species. These reactive species are like highly cytotoxic and they interact with cellular components leading to damage and finally eliciting cell death. Uh, however, recent studies have shown that hypoxic tumors show reduced response to photodynamic therapy as well, uh, similar to radiation chemotherapy. The reason for reduced uh, treatment efficacy with photodynamic therapy is because it depends on uh, two conditions. First, the local oxygen availability in the tumor, and second, the total amount of photosensitizer being internalized in the tumor cells. So for information regarding oxygen, uh, generally uh, uh, point electrode measurements are used, while photosensitizer information is obtained using surface weighted fluorescence imaging. Neither measurements reflect the overall profile of the tumor. Uh, to address this issue and improve PDT efficacy, we propose to develop a single nano entity to deliver oxygen and photosensitizer simultaneously and use an imaging modality to monitor the oxygen and photosensitizer uptake in real time. We chose photoacoustic imaging uh, as our imaging modality as it facilitates real time oxygen saturation imaging, tumor imaging, and which allows for guiding uh, PDT therapy accurately. For a proposed single agent, we developed a uh, perfluoropentane-based nanodroplets and conjugated BPD and ICG to the outer lipid shell. 
BPD acts as a photosensitizer while ICG was employed as photoacoustic contrast agent. The oxygen is dissolved in the inner core of the uh, perfluorapentane nanodroplets. The overall idea is that we use photoacoustic imaging to monitor the nanodroplets internalization in the tumor. And as the cancer cells endocytose the nanodroplets, they get broken down and BPD and oxygen get released into the cytosol. This is when we perform PDT uh, with 690 nanometer laser for BPD excitation uh, to generate cytotoxic reactive oxygen species and uh, resulting in cell death. Overall, the synthesized nanodroplets uh, were uniform in size with an average diameter of 160 nanometer in size with a polydispersity index of slightly above 0.1. Optical characterization revealed successful binding of BPD and ICG by the presence of the characteristic peaks. And we also performed photoacoustic spectroscopy and the results of photoacoustic spectroscopy was in correlation with the optical absorption results we achieved. In our study, we used a vivo laser ultrasound coupled photoacoustic imaging system from Michel Sonics. We used LZ250 ultrasound transducer with integrated fiber optic cable for light delivery. The bandwidth of the ultrasound transducer was 13 to 24 megahertz with a center transmit frequency of 21 megahertz. And the axial and lateral resolution of the system are 75 micron and 165 micron respectively. We used a 20 hertz uh, tunable a pulsed laser with a wavelength range of 680 to 970 nanometer in our study. And the laser had an energy output of 30 to 50 millijoules uh, with a signal to noise ratio of 20 decibels and a photoacoustic dynamic range of 70 decibels. So the presence of ICG in the nanodroplets uh, provide a photoacoustic contrast at 800 nanometer. And we could see the photoacoustic signal coming from ICG containing nanodroplets alone. And uh, along with providing the contrast, ICG also plays a key role in uh, releasing the oxygen from the nanodroplets as the ICG under excitation raises local temperature resulting in triggering the liquid to gas phase transition of the nanodroplets, which aids in releasing the oxygen. We can observe this effect by the exponential decrease in the PS signal over time. Also ICG has broad absorption spectrum and also overlaps BPD's absorption at 690 nanometer. So we tested out the photoacoustic contrast uh, generated by the nanodroplets at 690 nanometer. And we found that like uh, the contrast obtained at 690 nanometer was significantly lesser than the contrast obtained at 800 nanometer. Also the nanodroplet uh, phase transition doesn't happen at 690 nanometer, proving that ICG enables the triggering of oxygen release and it occurs only at uh, ICG's excitation of 800 nanometer alone. Next, we evaluated the BPD's singlet oxygen generation under nanodroplets formulation. For singlet oxygen evaluation, we mixed both the formulations of uh, BPD uh, in free and nanodroplets formulation with a commercially available singlet oxygen sensor green. And uh, we irradiated the solution with 690 nanometer laser at an irradiance of 150 milliwatt centimeter square and measured the fluorescence of the solution before and after the irradiance. We can see that the, the uh, singlet oxygen uh, fluorescence uh, for BPD uh, in free and nanodroplets formation were like similar, both under no light conditions and light conditions. However, when we created an hypoxic environment using uh, bubbled nitrogen in the solutions, uh, like the, uh, the singlet oxygen generation of free BPD was significantly reduced. Uh, whereas the singlet oxygen generation of like BPD nanodroplets was increased, uh, which is due to the availability of oxygen in the nanodroplets in the vicinity of the BPD. Uh, this result shows that the nanodroplets can perform better under oxygen deprived conditions. And moreover, uh, any nano entity that focuses on encapsulating multiple optical dyes with overlapping absorption spectra need to evaluate their uh, potential interference on each other's performance. As it can be seen, ICG has a, a overlapping absorption at 690, which is BPD's absorption maxima, uh, which could lead to possible interactions. So to further understand uh, this uh, mechanism, we formulated nanodroplets with different ratio of BPD and ICG with one is to one, one is to two, and one is to four respectively. 
and we performed like single light oxygen generation experiment. We observed a significant reduction in the production of single light oxygen uh, when the nano droplets were formulated with one is to four loading ratio. Uh, however, when we, uh, however, under like one is to one and one is to loading ratio conditions, the single light oxygen generation was like very similar to each other uh, and was like significantly uh, like increased than the one is to four. The difference in the performance of BPD and ICG nanodroplets with different loading ratios could be due to the interference of ICG with the availability of uh, photons for BPD's excitation for photodynamic activity. As both BPD and ICG have like very similar molar extension coefficient at 687 nanometer. This data highlights the importance of optimizing the ratio of dyes when encapsulating within a nanentity for like any photodynamic or like photoacoustic applications. Uh, next, we evaluated the cellular localization of BPD and ICG in the nanodroplets formulation. We incubated uh, FADU cells with BPD uh, and like other nanodroplets formulations and stained with mitotracker and lysotracker. Free BPD and uh, BPD PFP showed strong fluorescence throughout the cells. The zoodop color yellow fluorescence signal on the merged image uh, uh, represents the co-localization of like mitotracker signal and BPD fluorescence, qualitatively indicating the uptake of BPD gets localized in the mitochondria as opposed to lysosomes. Uh, furthermore, like we uh, uh, perform like similar experiments to determine the localization of ICG in free and nanodroplets formulation uh, using very uh, using a similar experiments. Uh, with ICG, we observed that ICG add uh, in free or like uh, nanodroplets formulation had punctuate localization around the nucleus and, uh, and was like uh, co localizing with the LISO tracker, uh, showing that ICG preferably localizes in the lysosomes in the cells. Along with the co localization study, we performed quantitative co localization analysis which indicated no significant difference in organal localizations of the dyes, whether in the free form or when encapsulated in the nanodroplets. Later, we performed quantitative uptake analysis by extracting cell lysates and uh, BPD PFP and BPD uh, plus ICG PFP, the nanodroplets formations had significantly increased uptake than the free formulations of free PD while free ICG or ICG nanotropous formulation didn't show any uh, difference in terms of the uptake in the cells. Uh, free BPD uh, preferably enters cells via simple cell diffusion through the cell membrane. In contrast, the BPD nanodroplets enters the cells via clathering mediated endocytosis, uh, which is a preferred route for like nanoparticles of like size between 20 to 200 nanometers. As a result, the nanodroplet formation of BPD had a higher uptake. On the other hand, free ICG or nanodroplets ICG enter cells via clathering mediated endocytosis. Hence, no such difference was observed in terms of the uptake of ICG in the cells. And after the successful in vitro characterizations and uptake studies, we performed PDT efficiency evaluation for the nanodroplets. First, we plated FADU cells uh, in petri dish, and 24 hours later, we added different formulations of like nanodroplets uh, of photosensitizers and incubated the cells for 90 minutes. And post 90 minutes, we irradiated the cells with 690 nanometer laser at 150 milliwatts per centimeter square irradiance. And 24 hours post PDT, we performed the viability analysis of the cells using MTT assay. As expected, PFP and ICG PFP didn't show any toxicity in the cells at the wavelength that we were using for irradiation. We used liposomal BPD, uh, which was prefer prepared like similar to like a, uh, like commercially available BPD formulation with sudine, and uh, for comparison with BPD PFP performance, both BPD PFP and uh, liposomal BPD produced a dose dependent cell killing with no statistical significance between them. When we performed PDT with BPD and ICG containing nanodroplets, we observed the one is to one loading ratio uh, pro uh, produced statistically similar performance to BPD PFP uh, nanodroplets, while the performance of like one is to two loading ratio of BPD ICG nanodroplets was significantly hampered. 
we believe the difference in the phototoxicity of BPD ICG nano droplets with different loading ratios could be due to the interference of ICG with the availability of photons for BPD excitation. Uh, as a result, for uh, mo moving on to like our like in vivo studies, we used BPD ICG PFP at a loading ratio of one is to one. And after the successful in vitro characterizations, we evaluated uh, the nanotropics efficacy in the in vivo model. First, we tested out the oxygen delivery ability of the nanodroplets, for which we used a subcutaneous tumor model of fiduscomer cell carcinoma. And when the tumors reached a size of six to eight millimeter in diameter, we administered the nanodroplets at a BPD dose of one mg per kg equivalent via tail vein injection. And simultaneously, we performed photoacoustic ultrasound imaging on the tumors before and after administration of the nanodroplets. In the top left, we see the photograph of the tumor in XY direction with Z being in depth. On the top right, we see the ultrasound and photoacoustic image of the tumor. The photoacoustic image was obtained at 800 nanometer for ICG's excitation. The tumor boundary is identified by the green ROI. The nanodroplets carry ICG along with oxygen and BPD to the tumor. As ICG is a good photoacoustic contrast agent, the accumulation of ICG in the tumor significantly enhances the photoacoustic contrast, which can be like seen uh, as shown by the white arrows on the tumor. Furthermore, we quantified the photoacoustic image obtained at 800 nanometer to understand the, uh, the amount of uh, contrast uh, enhanced in the tumors. We found out like the after administration of the nanotoplets, we found uh, the ICG contrast was like significantly enhanced. Moreover, the perfluoropentane nanotoplets also increases the ultrasound contrast, which is due to the formation of gaseous microbubbles post irradiation. Quantification of ultrasound intensity showed uh, a 25 percent increase in contrast uh, per total tumor area post nanodroplets administration. After the tumor contrast enhancement, we performed oxygen saturation imaging. Herein we see the ultrasound image and oxygen saturation image of the tumor. The tumor boundaries are identified by the green ROI and the oxygen saturation map is given in red and blue with red being highly oxygenated and blue being hypoxic regions respectively. By visual inspection on the oxygen saturation image, we could see that the before administration of the uh, nanodroplets, the tumors are like highly hypoxic, as evident by the, the black and blue regions in the tumor. But after the administration of the nanodroplets, the oxygen content in the tumor gets significantly enhanced, uh, which is like evident from the more redder shade regions in the tumor. We further quantified the oxygen saturation image to understand the change in oxygenation in different regions of the tumor. First, we performed the pixel-wise quantification of oxygen saturation in the tumor area and display the data as histogram. Post nanodroplet administration, the histogram shifted towards right and the total count above 60% uh, oxygen saturation was increased. The average oxygen saturation in the nanodroplets administered uh, tumors had significant increase in the, uh, in the overall tumor oxygenation content. In contrast, the total hemoglobin levels in the tumor showed no difference before and after nanodroplets administration. And this shows that uh, no sudden uh, accumulation of endogenous absorbers such as blood or other components uh, uh, rushed into the tumor uh, imaging uh, field of view uh, uh, when the study was performed. And any increase in the oxygen saturation signal is purely due to the delivery of oxygen by the nanodroplets. Further, we quant subdivided the tumor region into multiple ROIs and quantified the change in oxygen saturation. And we found the, uh, the regions which were like uh, low oxygen saturated in the beginning had demonstrated an increase in the oxygen saturation post administration, while the regions which were like highly oxygenated in the first place didn't show any change in the oxygen saturation post administration. We also used a commercially available oxygen sensor system to validate the results of photoacoustic imaging and oxygen saturation analysis. The oxygen sensor recorded a ninefold increase in the tumor oxygenation post nanodroplets administration and validates the results of photoacoustic imaging. 
After imaging, we performed histological examinations to demonstrate the nanodroplets ability to deliver oxygen and relieve hypoxia in the tumor. The immunofluorescence image of the controlled tumor is shown here and the tumor is stained for uh, nuclei with DAPI, vasculature for CD31 and pimnodazole for hypoxic regions in green. We can observe that the pimnodazole signal, which is green, is more prevalent in the core of the tumor and also like in the other regions of the tumor. The zoomed in set one and two uh, demonstrate the hypoxic core in uh, eye magnification and uh, which shows the hypoxic regions both uh, in, in the presence of the uh, tumor uh, vasculatures as well as like away from the tumor vasculature. And when we are administered nanodroplets into the tumor, we observed a significant decrease in the tumor hypoxia, which is due to very low pimnodazole signal that can be seen, uh, which indicates a successful uh, elimination of hypoxia in these tumors. We also quantified the uh, total hypoxic regions in the immunofluorescence images uh, using MATLAB algorithm, and we found uh, the nanodroplet significantly reduced the tumor hypoxia when compared with the PBS treated uh, tumors. This result in combination with the outcomes of OxySat analysis proves the ability of nanodroplets in overcoming hypoxia successfully. Finally, we performed in vivo PDT experiments. First, we created a subcutaneous uh, xenografts of Fadus squamous cell carcinoma. And when the tumor reached a size of 68 millimeter in diameter and around 50 cubic millimeter of tumor volume, we administered the nanodroplets at a dose of 0.5 mg per kg. In a separate experiment, we found out that at 90 minutes post-administration, the accumulation of photosensitizers and the nanodroplets reaches maximum in the tumor. So we used a 90 minutes drug light interval and performed PDT at 90 minutes time point after administration of the nanodroplets. We performed PDT with 690 nanometer laser at 100 joules per centimeter square fluence with 40 milliwatts per centimeter square irradiance. We compared the nanodroplets uh, results with a commercially available uh, formulation of PPD visudan, which is used for age-related uh, demacularization. PPD PFP had a better therapeutic response than visudan, uh, and and the performance was significant at the endpoint of the uh, study, uh, the, which is due to the uh, presence of extra oxygen in the vicinity of the nanodroplets. We also evaluated the treatment efficacy of nanodroplets fabricated with BPD ICG together. BPD ICG PFP had a very similar performance as opposed to uh, BPD nanodroplets alone. And statistically, no significance was observed between both the group, both the formulations of nanodroplets. In addition to uh, investigating the efficacy of nanodroplets in reducing tumor volume, we examined the acute effects of uh, PDT in treating uh, tumors at 24 post treatment in causing necrosis. The Cheney image of a representative tumor and, a, uh, and BPD ICG PFP treated tumor is shown here. We can qualitatively en envisage the necrosis imparted in the tumor by the oxygen loaded nanodroplets. The total necrotic area in the tumor was quantified and we found out that uh, tumors receiving BPD ICG nanodroplets are about 50% uh, necros necrosis in them when compared with the control group. In summary, we successfully designed uh, perfluoropentane nanodroplets to elevate hypoxia and demonstrate the enhanced PDT efficacy in Edna cancer xenograft models. Uh, with the help of photoacoustic imaging, we monitored real time tumor oxygenation status and the change in it with nanodroplets administration and validated the results of photoacoustic imaging with histology. In a future study, we want to perform active dosimetry for PDT with the photoacoustic nanodroplets with the information we obtain at photoacoustic imaging of photosensitizer accumulation in the tumors and oxygen content of the tumor. Finally, we'd also want to perform real-time photodynamic therapy monitoring with photoacoustic imaging in orthotopic adenic cancer models to understand the uh, molecular changes happening uh, at the time of PDT in, the, in, in these tumors. Finally, I would like to thank my advisor uh, and mentor, Dr. Malidi, for her assistance and guidance in this project. 
and also my colleague Gian for her assistance in histology. I also thank my collaborators from Nana Bridge, Jason and Kim for providing the nano droplets. I also acknowledge the funds that were used in this project and thank the Visual Sonics for providing me the opportunity to present my research here. Thank you. If you have any questions. Great. Thank you so much, Marvin, for that fascinating talk. Uh, I'd like to remind our audience that if you do have questions for Marvin, please submit those through the Q&A. So we do have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, can you tell me how does photodynamic therapy specifically target tumor tissues? So like when we administer photosensitizers into the tumor region, like all cells, including cancer cells, like uh, internalize the photosensitizers. But uh, like, and cancer cells are like preferably like more metabolically active than the uh, normal cells. And normal cells like uh, when, de uh, when uh, like, uh, determines when th these photosensitizers are not for the use, they quickly eradicate them. But cancer cells tends to hold to them because of their enhanced permeability and retention effect, which leads us to like uh, sort of like use uh, at like a drug light interval uh, to like specifically target the tumor cells passively. Great, thank you. Um, can you tell me why did you choose the BPD as the photosensitizer and the ICG as the photoacoustic contrast reagent rather than just using ICG for both of those? Uh, yeah, like uh, clinically, uh, or like even like preclinical research, like few uh, studies have used ICG as a dual purpose photosensitizer and a contrast agent. Uh, but however, the quantum yield of ICG is like significantly lower than BPD. The quantum yield of ICG is around 0.1 one, whereas the quantum yield of BPD is 0 0.77, and the, uh, which, is, uh, which is why like I used uh, BPD as a photosensitizer for maximum photodynamic effect in, in our research. Great, thank you. Um, do you know the localization of ICD and BPD in the nano droplets, and is it dissolved in the PFP lipid core or in the lipid layer? Uh, we believe the BPD and ICG gets conjugated on the lipid cell. The way that we formulate uh, nanodroplets is like by uh, like adding uh, BPD and ICG to the lipid cake. And finally, like we add the perfluoropentin uh, mixture to the li uh, lipid cake uh, to get uh, to be encapsulated inside. Great, thank you. Um, you mentioned that ICG has an absorption at about 600 nanny. 690 nanometers, um, which is BPD's excitation peak. Does their interaction lead to any kind of BPD photo bleaching? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Like, uh, yes, like BPD and ICG have like a very uh, similar absorbance around 690 nanometer and also I showed the, the molar extension coefficient at the, uh, that wavelength. Uh, like in our previous research, we, uh, we like perform like studies with like different ratios of BPD and ICG under uh, under a, like a non uh, nano formulation conditions, and what we found out was like uh, BPD's uh, photoactivity was not affected by ICG, while uh, BPD's uh, in presence of ICG led to ICG's photo degradation. So that's why like when BPD and ICG are being like nano uh, formulated into a nano entity. Like we had to like optimize the loading ratio uh, to maintain the uh, activity of both ICG and BPD uh, at perfect conditions. Great, thank you. And it looks like um, just two more questions here. How does alleviating hypoxia help with improving the efficacies of therapies, either photodynamic therapy or even chemotherapy? So like as I mentioned, uh, in photodynamic therapy, the photosensitizers after excitation interact with uh, molecular oxygen to generate singlet oxygen, which is uh, very toxic to the cells and uh, damages cellular biocomponents, which results to the cell death. So by removing hypoxia, which means like availability of like low oxygen in the tumor, by providing more oxygen, we, we can enhance the uh, production of singlet oxygen in these tumors. As a result, the cytotoxic damage uh, imparted in the tumors will be more, which results in enhanced PDT efficacy. And coming to the chemotherapy response, uh, uh, under the hypoxic conditions, these tumors tend to upregulate certain genes 
which results in the expression of hypoxia inducible factors and which further upregulates certain uh, multi drug resistant expressions called pgp uh, p glycoproteins uh, by delivering uh, extra oxygen to the tumors, hypoxia is alleviated, which leads to the uh, down regulation of hypoxia inducible factors, which consequently leads to down regulation of PGP, which uh, leads to the reduced chemo resistance. As a result, the chemotherapy efficacy is also improved. Great, thank you. Uh, Marvin, can you tell me, do you have any data or comments um, potentially about IL-6 release in PDP? Uh, that's a very good question. Like, uh, I don't have uh, any data on the release of IL-6 after PDT. That is something that, like, we are, like, uh, focusing on our, like, future studies as well. Great, thank you. Well, if there are no further questions um, for Marvin, I would like to take this opportunity to thank him for his time today and his excellent presentation. And I would also like to remind the audience that please reach out to Visual Sonics if you have any questions about any of the technology you heard about today. Many, many channels to reach us on, not only our website, but of course, any of our social media channels. And of course, please feel free to access any of our platforms such as the Learning Hub. Thank you so much for your time today, Marvin, and thank you all of you for attending. Thank you.